consider an instruction pipeline with four stages S1, S2, S3 and S4 each with combinational circuit only. The pipeline registers are required between each stage and at the end of the last stage. Delays for the stages and pipeline registers are given in the figure. What is the approximate speed up of the pipeline in steady state under ideal condition compared to the corresponding non-pipeline implementation? We have a four-stage pipeline. The processing delay within each stage is given. We are using intermediate buffers between the stages and at the end of the last stage. The buffer delay is also given. We need to find out the speed up of the pipeline with respect to the non-pipeline implementation. We know that the speed up in pipeline implementation is equal to the time taken for non-pipeline approach divided by the time taken for pipeline approach. Suppose we have n number of instructions to process. The number of instructions are not specified. Let n be the number of instructions to process. In non-pipeline implementation, each instruction passed through each phase. We are not using intermediate buffer. Each instruction passed through each phase. Hence, the time taken for each individual instruction is 5 plus 6 plus 11 plus 8, which is 30 nanoseconds. One by one, the individual instructions are processed in non-pipeline implementation. Hence, the time taken for n number of instructions is n into 5 plus 6 plus 11 plus 8 nanoseconds, which is n into 30 nanoseconds. And for the same system, if we are using a pipeline approach like this, we need to use intermediate buffers. Also, we need to synchronize between the stages so that we need to connect a single clock to all the stages and the clock period should be set to the longest stage delay. Here, stage 1 delay is 5 plus 1, 6 nanoseconds. Stage 2 total delay is 7 nanoseconds. Stage 3 delay is 12 nanoseconds. Stage 4 delay is 9 nanoseconds. Hence, the longest stage delay is 12 nanoseconds. Thus, the clock period is equal to 12 nanoseconds. Now, what is the total time taken for pipeline approach? It takes 4 clock cycles to fill the pipeline. So, to get the first instruction out, the time taken is 1 into 4 into 1 clock time. And for the remaining n minus 1 instruction, the time taken is 1 clock time. For the first instruction, the time taken is number of stages into one clock time. For the remaining n minus one instruction, the time taken is one clock time. Once the pipe is filled, we get one instruction out in every clock, which is equal to four plus n minus one into one clock. Now, what is speed up? The time taken for non-pipeline approach divided by the time taken for pipeline approach, thirty n nanoseconds divided by 4 plus n minus 1 into 1 clock, which is 3 plus n into 1 clock is 12 nanosecond. Now by taking n out, and as n tends to infinity, we can see the speed up is equal to 30 by 12, 2.5. We know that the maximum speed up that can be achieved is equal to the number of stages when n tends to infinity, when the number of instructions is very large. Here, even if the number of instructions is very large, the speed up is only equal to 2.5. Why? Because different stages are having different delays and we are using intermediate buffers and the clock period is set to the longest delay. So, all these factors will affect the speed up and hence the speed up is much less than m.